بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue the lesson from where we left off last week and that's where the red highlighted text is. So the Sheikh, he was still discussing about the first nullifier and the greatest of them, of the nullifiers of Islam, and that is Shirk. So the Sheikh continues uh, discussing uh, Shirk and we'll read from that as well, the explanation, and then inshallah I'll translate that as usual. So the Sheikh, he says, كَانَ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَا اللَّهِ إِلَاهًا آخَرٌ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَهَذِهِ أَكْبَرُ الْجَرَائِمُ وَأَعْذَمُ الْمَوْبِقَاتِ قَالَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ عَثَامًا يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانَ إِلَّا مَنْ تَاب إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنْ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابًا So these uh, verses that the Sheikh's quoting are from Surah Al-Furqan, uh, Furqan, verse 68 to 71. So let's go through the the meaning of the translation. So if we go to, we'll read all of the verses, inshallah. So from verse 68. And those who invoke not any other God along with Allah, nor kill such life as Allah has forbidden except for just cause, nor commit illegal sexual intercourse, and whoever does this shall receive punishment. The torment will be doubled to him on the day of resurrection, and he will abide therein in disgrace. Except those who repent and believe in Islamic monotheism and do righteous deeds, for those Allah will change their sins into good deeds. And Allah is oft forgiven, most merciful. And then the final ayah, 71, verse 71. And whosoever repents and does righteous good deeds, then verily he repents towards Allah with true repentance. So the Shaykh, he brings those verses. And he says, he continues, he says, فَقَوْلُهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى فِي سُورَةِ النِّسَاءِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ الْحَدِيثِ فِي هَذِي الْآيَةِ عَمَّنْ لَقُوا اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بِشِرْكِ وَلَقُوهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بِذُنُومِ الْأُخْرَى الَّتِي دُونَ الشِرْكِ حُكْمُهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَنَّ الْمُشْرِكِ لَا مَتْمَا لَهُ إِطْلَاقٍ فِي مَغْفِرَةِ اللَّهِ وَلَا س بل ليس له يوم القيامة إلا النار مخلدا في عبد الآباد لا يقضى عليه في النار فيموت وينتهي الأمر بموته ولا أيضا يخفف عنه من عذابها ولا أيضا يخرج من النار ويعاد إلى الدنيا ليعمل صالحا, صالحا غير الذي كان يعمل كل ذلك لا يكون So then the Sheikh he explains and he says he says with regards to the ayah that was mentioned several times in the previous lessons in the previous two lessons in Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka towards the end of the ayah and that was established last week if you remember that where Allah says that indeed or verily he Allah does not forgive that you uh, commit shirk 
with him, but he forgives other than that. And so the Shaykh he explains, he says, so whoever uh, meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with shirk, dying upon shirk, and wh- and he says, and also whoever meets subhan- subhanahu wa ta'ala with other sins, other than shirk, then obviously Allah will, according to Allah's will, either will forgive them or punish them for those deeds other than shirk. However, as we know, it was been established from previous lessons and also in this lesson that somebody who dies upon shirk, there is no, he won't taste any mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will be placed in the hellfire forever. Where, as mentioned the previous, uh, as as will be mentioned here in a few lines time, just in the next paragraph, that those people who meet Allah with shirk, when they, and they die upon kufr, for example, they will say to Allah, they will cry and they'll say to Allah, please send us back to the dunya and we'll do righteous good deeds. But as we know, you only get one chance and you won't be returned back to the dunya. So, the shaykh, he continues and he says that the mushrik, the polytheist, is going to, is going to request, while he's in the fire, he's going to request that Allah kills him, finishes him off, either kills him or finishes him off so, he could, so the torment can stop or will repent uh, or will request from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lessening of the punishment and also they will request while they're in the hellfire that they be returned to the dunya so that they can actually do the right things do the righteous deeds worship Allah upon Tawheed do righteous deeds other than what they used to do yeah so then the shaykh he brings the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here and he says ذَكْرَهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ قَالَ اخْسَأُوا فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ وَقَالَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَهُمْ نَارُ, لهم نار جَهَنَّمَ لَا يُقْضَ عَلَيْهِمْ فَيَمُوتُوا هذا الأمر, هذا, هذا الأمر الأول ولا يخفف عنهم من عذابها هذا الأمر الثاني كذلك نجزي كل كفور وهم يسترخون فيها ربنا أخرجنا نعمل صالحا غير الذي كنا نعمل هذا الأمر الثالث الذي يطلبونه قال أولم نعمركم ما يتذكر فيه من تذكر وجاءكم النذير فذوقوا فما للظالمين من نصير so that's from سورة الفاتر uh, and also the first ayah that we just mentioned there was from Surah Al-Mu'minun. So let's go there and have a look at the meanings in, uh, from that verse. Verse 108. Where Allah says, He says to the disbelievers, He, Allah will say, remain you in it with ignominy and speak, you, and speak not to me. And then also from Surah al uh, uh, Surah Al-Fatir, verse 37. Let's go have a, have a look there as well. Verse 36 and 37. But those who disbelieve in the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, for them will be the fire of hell. Neither it will have a complete killing effect on them, so that they die, nor shall its torment be lightened for them. Thus do we requite every disbeliever. Then the next verse, 37. Therein they will cry. Our Lord bring us out, we shall do righteous good deeds, not the evil deeds that we used to do. And Allah will reply, Did we not give you lives long enough so that whosoever would receive admonition could receive it? And the warner came to you, so taste, so taste you the evil of your deeds. For the Dali moon, polytheists and wrongdoers, etc., there is no helper. Yeah, so that makes it clear. And the Sheikh brings those ayahs to us with regards to believers and what situation they'll be in <clears throat> in the hellfire so then the shaykh he continues and he says وَلِنَتَنَبَّهْ هُنَا أَنَّ الْمُرَادْ بِالظَّالِمِينَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَأَنَّ الْمُرَادْ بِالظُّلْمْ هُنَا ظُلْمُ الشِّرْكِ وَالْكُفْرُ بِاللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى 
اما الظلم الذي هو دون شرك ظلم النفس بالمعاصي والذنوب فهذا حكمه اخر كما سياتي بيانه ان شاء الله. So then the Sheikh makes a clarification to help us understand these ayahs that we've read. And the Sheikh he says we need to pay attention to the uh, meaning or the intent of the word ظالمين in this ayah towards the end of this uh, the ayah the last ayah that we read verse 37 surah surah to fatir and the sheikh says that the meaning or the intent of the meaning here of the word ظالمين or ظالمون is regarding the mushrikeen the polytheists it means them and the sheikh says the meaning of the word ظلم oppression here he says it's the oppression of shirk of doing shirk ظلم الشرك he says and disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says as for uh, the oppression uh, which is other than shirk then he says for example uh, oppressing yourself ظلم nafs by committing uh, sins um, you know uh, uh, committing sins and, uh, and, and falling into sins so then the sheikh says that the ruling on this is another ruling not the one that we're talking about right now and the sheikh says that uh, the clarification of that will come inshallah uh, in this lesson I believe so we'll have a look inshallah when we come across that so then the sheikh he says وَهَذِهِ الْآيَةُ الْكَرِيمَةُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ which we've uh, read many times so far so we should be well acquainted with it the sheikh says تُعَدُّ قَعِدَةً عَذِيمَةً وَأَصْلًا متينا في باب الوعيد والتهديد الوارد في كتاب الله وسنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم بمعنى أن آيات الوعيد التي جاءت في القرآن في, في القرآن الكريم يجب أن تفهم يجب أن تفهم في ضوء هذه في هذه الآية الكريمة لأن هذه الآية أصل وأصل وأساس تعاد إليه نصوص الوعيد الواردة في كتاب الله وسنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم يجب أن تفهم في ضوء هذه القائدة التي انتذمتها هذه الآية إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء So then the Sheikh he says uh, and this noble آية that we read and we should all be acquainted with the meaning of that, that Allah does not forgive that you commit shirk with him, but he forgives other than that to whoever he wills, as we read many times. And the Sheikh, he says that this is considered a principle, uh, uh, and, and, and within this, when you extract the, the benefits from this ayah, then there's a, princi- a great principle that is considered or brought forth from there. And a major uh, or a strong foundation, should we say, a strong foundation in the subject of, um, from the angle of, let's say, from the angle of um, uh, threatened, being threatened with punishment, which we see in the in the book of Allah and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Meaning, the Sheikh says, meaning that these verses where Allah threatens us with punishment, they come in the Qur'an al-Kareem. And it's obligatory, it's obligatory for us to understand them uh, in the light of this, of this ayah that we just read. He says that because this, uh, 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 this ayah, it is a foundation which all of the evidences return to. It's a returning point. Uh, it's uh, it's a turning p- point for many evidences uh, with regards to threatening, uh, where Allah threatens us with punishment. That have come in the book of Allah and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu uh, in, the, in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the Sheikh says it's obligatory for us to understand these in that light and that respect, and the principle with regards to this ayah that. Allah forgives everything to whoever he wills except shirk. If we die upon shirk, that's it. 
whoever dies upon shirk is that is in big trouble. And remember from the previous lesson that if somebody is alive, because this ayah is referring to, as as the Sheikh mentioned last week, this ayah is referring to a person who dies upon shirk, and his actions are cut off now, right? Because he leaves the dunya, his actions are cut off. But whoever, as the other ayah was mentioned from Surah Al-Zumr, remember from Surah Al-Zumr, where Allah Jalla mentions that to the ones who sin, that Allah forgives all sins, and that not to despair, and to seek forgiveness, and be regretful for what you've done, and don't turn back to those sins, and do righteous deeds, and Allah forgives all sins while you're alive, while you're alive, including shirk. But if you die upon shirk, you're in trouble. So then the shaykh, he says, he continues, he says, وَلِلْتَوْضِيحِ أَقُولُ لَوْ قَرَأْنَا سُورَةَ النِّسَاءِ سَيَمُرْ عَلَيْنَا فِي مَوْضِعِينَ مِنْ هَذِي السُورَةِ مِنْ هَذِي السُورَةِ هَذِي لَايَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَبَيْنَ هَذَيْنَ الْمَوْضِعِينَ فِي سُورَةِ النِّسَاءِ وَرَدَ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَمَنْ يُقْتَلْ وَمَنْ يَقْتُلْ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمُ خَالِدًا فِيهَا So let's just stop there for a second and then we'll, we'll go through the rest of that paragraph. So then the Sheikh says, for further clarification, he says, I say that if we read uh, Surah An-Nisa or when we read Surah An-Nisa or if we read Surah An-Nisa we'll come across two two areas in that in the surah that we come across this ayah in Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih yeah and the shaykh says and and be, be, between those two points in surah an-nisa we also will come across this ayah wa may yaqtul mu'min uh, mu'minan muta'amidan faja fa jazaa'uhu jahannam khalidan fiha meaning that whoever kills a believer intentionally but then his then his recompense is jahannam yeah and he'll be placed in it and it says khalidan eternal but we'll the sheikhs explain it now so let's go through that bit so hold that thought and the sheikh he continues he says lamma intaza aqwam min ahli al-ahwa wa arbab al-dhalal hadhi al-aya wa man yaqtul mu'minan muta'ammidan fa jazaa'uhu jahannam khalidan fiha لما انتزعوها لما انتزع لما انتزعوا هذه الايه وجردوها من سياق من سياقاتها من سياقاتها في القران الكريم وحكموا في ضوئها على مرتكب الكبيرة ظلوا ظلالا مبينا فقالوا ان ان مرتكب الكبائر اي التي دون الشرك مخلد في النار يوم القيامة قالوا ودليل أن الله قال في حق القاتل ومن يقتل مؤمنا متعمدا فجزاؤه جهنم خالدا فيها فيقال هؤلاء ماذا تصنعون so let's stop there for a second so because there's a lot of points being mentioned so then the sheikh says with regards to this ayah um, where Allah mentioned whoever kills a believer intentionally then his recompense will be Jahannam, the hellfire and the Sheikh says that when a group of people when they came across this ayah and the people of uh, desires came across this ayah and the heads of and the heads of those people the, at the top of the chain misguiding others when they came across this ayah and they started looking at it on its own and started looking at it and delving into and pondering over it with outside of its context with regards to the Quran, uh, Quran and they started using this ayah to extract uh, rulings such as whoever, whoever commits a major sin because obviously killing somebody is a major sin of course Killing a believer is a major sin. And, and they started extracting from this ayah without actually having a look at the context and understanding the whole topic properly. They started, they basically, anybody who committed a major sin, 
And as we know, there's over a hundred major sins, roughly speaking. So anybody who committed any kind of major sin, they stamped them with kufr. This person is a disbeliever, this person is a disbeliever, this Muslim has become a disbeliever. Incorrectly, of course. And they started stamping them with this label incorrectly. And the Sheikh mentions this here. And this is with regard to uh, the Khawarij, the renegades, the Khawarij, who are also responsible for uh, uh, the killing of uh, Uthman radiallahu anhu. And they're around today as well, as you see, uh, unfortunately. But anyway, anybody who commits a major sin, they, they stamp them uh, as a non-Muslim, basically. They do takfir on them. As we know, it's not true. And it's not the correct understanding. So then the Shaykh, he says, So he said to them, to, to these people, so the Shaykh says, in response to what they believe, incorrectly of course, it is said to them, he says, مَاذَا تَصْنَعُونَ فِي آيَتَيْنِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَرَدَتَا فِي صُورَةِ نَفْسِهَا تَسْبِقُ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ وَتَأْتِ بَعْدَهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ وَالْقَتْلُ دُونَ الشِّرْكِ فَمَاذَا تَصْنَعُونَ فِي هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ So then it said to them, even if somebody comes to us now, we say the same thing. It said to them, what are you doing? With, what are you doing with regards to or what are you going to come up with with regards to the two uh, the, the ayahs the two ayahs that come before this ayah that you've taken incorrectly and that ayah is in Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha which comes before this ayah and after it which means that as we already established in the last few lessons it means that Allah for, Allah forgives every sin to whoever he wills except the one who commits shirk with him yeah and we've we, we all established that so then the sheikh says he said to them well what about uh well what about these two ayahs are mentioned twice before and after the ayah that you guys are using as an evidence to do takfir on muslims who commit a major sin and they say that and, and killing is other than shirk i.e it's not shirk so, so what are you going to say about these ayahs that we mentioned? And the Shaykh, obviously it's a rhetorical question. And then the Shaykh, he says, وَلِهَذَا ذَكَرَ جَمَاءَةً مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءَ أَنَّ أَحَدَ أَصْحَابِ هَذَا الْفِكْرَ الظَّالِ الَّذِينَ يَحْكُمُونَ عَلَى مُرْتَكِبِ عَلَى مُرْتَكِبِ الْكَبِيرَةِ الَّتِي هِيَ دُونَ الشِّرْكِ بِالْخُلُودِ فِي النَّارِ أَبَدَ الْآبَادِ مُسْتَدِلِّينَ بِالْمُتَشَابِهِ مؤرضين عن المحكم قد قال الله عز وجل هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخر متشابهات ثم ذكر طريقة أهل الزيغ قال فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيتبعون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله وما يألم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم So the Sheikh he says that and this is why a group of a, a group from the scholars uh, mentioned with regards to the people who have this um, thought process of uh, using this ayah, whoever kill, you know, was it, uh, using an ayah from early in the last paragraph, using the ayah that whoever kills um, a believer intensely, then his recompense is the hellfire to, to justify uh, all uh, major sinners to be non Muslims. Then it said to them that they, or it's mentioned about them that they. Uh, are ruling using the rulings incorrectly and they are applying this ruling incorrectly on all major sinners declaring them uh disbelievers and 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 we know that killing is other than shirk in context to uh the ayah that we mentioned with regards that Allah forgives all sins except uh, to whoever he wills except the one who commits shirk with him and as those in, those people with incorrect view, they say that, oh, the person who commits a major sin, then he's in the hellfire forever, incorrectly, of course. It said to them that you've taken the mutashabihat, yeah, the unclear verses, 
and you've gone uh, far away from the clear verses and therefore because of a, a disease in your heart you've taken the wrong um, ruling and then the shaykh he brings uh, the ayahs are well known from Surah Ali Imran verse 7 uh, the ayah from uh, Surah Ali Imran verse 7 and if we go there we'll read the whole ayah inshallah it is he who has sent down to you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the book this Quran in it are verses that are entirely clear. They are the foundations of the book. And those are the verses of Al-Ahkam, commandments, etc. Al-Faraid, obligatory duties. And Al-Hudud, legal laws for the punishment of thieves, adulterers, etc. And others not entirely clear. So as for those in whose hearts there is a deviation from the truth, they follow that which is not entirely clear thereof, seeking Al-Fitna polytheism and trials etc and seeking for its hidden meanings but none knows its hidden meanings except Allah and those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say we believe in it the whole of it clear and unclear verses are from our Lord and none receive admonition except men of understanding and that's from Tafsir al-Tabari okay so uh, uh, the Sheikh then continues and he says he says i.e. And he gives his explanation as well. He says, i.e. al-rasikhun fil ilmi ya'lamuna ta'wilahu kama qala ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma ana min al-rasikhin fil ilmi al-ladhina ya'lamuna ta'wilah wal-murad bi ta'wilihi ay ma'na al-mutashabih. Al-rasikh fil ilmi ya'lam ma'na ta'wilih ta'wil ma'na ta'wilih wa tariqat al-rasikhina fil ilm i'adatu al-mushtabih ila al-muhkam fayat فَيَتَّضِحَ وَيَزُولَ الْإِشْتِبَاحِ أَمَّا أَهْلَ الزِّيرِ فَيَعْرِضُونَ عَنِ الْآيَاتِ الْمُحْكَمَاتِ وَيَتَّبِعُونَ الْمُتَشَابِهَاتِ بْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبْتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِهِ So then the Shaykh says, i.e. explains, he says, i.e. the, the uh, deeply rooted in knowledge, they know the, the exegesis of, of these unclear verses. They know the meanings, the correct meanings. And then he quotes, uh, like uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma said, he said, I am from the, the ones who are deeply rooted in knowledge and understanding. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I know the exegesis of the tafsir, yeah, the ta'wil of these verses. And the Shaykh says, the intent of the word ta'wil or tafsir or explanation is meaning, it refers to the unclear verses. And the Sheikh says that the Rasikh, the one who's deeply rooted in knowledge, they, he knows the meanings. And the way or the, the, the approach that these deeply rooted, firmly rooted scholars uh, take is that they use the, the unclear verses and they refer these unclear verses to the foundations, which are the clear verses, the muhkamat, yeah? As Allah mentioned in the, uh, in the, in the ayah that we, we read. And so using that approach, the unclear verses become clear by referring them to the foundations of the Quran, i.e. the muhkamat, those ayat. Yeah? The Sheikh says, in contrast to that, in contrast to that, then the, the people of deviation, they turn away from the clear verses and they only focus on the un unclear verses. By that, they seek fitna, polytheism, and fitna generally, and also uh, incorrect inter interpretation of those ayat. Yeah. <coughs> so the Shaykh continues and he says, فَأَحَدُ أَرْبَابِ أَهْلِ الظَّلَالِ مِمَّنْ يَحْكُمُونَ عَلَى مُتَكَبِ الْكَبِيرَةِ بِالْخُلُودِ في النار قال مقالة شنيئة مقالة شنيئة عاطمة أراد بها تشكيك الناس في أديانهم وعقائدهم ولكن الله عز وجل الجمه بما يقطع دابرة في المجلس في المجلس نفسه قال ذلك الرجل في مجلس أنا إذا وقفت أمام الله يوم القيامة سأقول له إن مرتكب الكبير مخلد في النار أراد أن يشبه 
على الناس قال فإذا قال لي ما الذي حملك على ذلك قال أقول أنت قلت في القرآن ومن يقتل مؤمنا متعمدا فجزاؤه جهنم خالدا فيها قد ذكر لهذا القصة ابن قتيبة رحمه الله وجماعة من أهل العلم وكان في المجلس شاب صغير فقال له على الفور فإذا قال لك فإذا قال لك الله وقد قلت في القرآن إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء وقد شئت أن أغفر له فماذا تقول فبهت So let's just stop there So then the sheikh he brings um, some information here for us and he says <coughs> he says one of the heads of the people of misguidance those who particularly those who rule upon the muslims when they fall into a major sin that they, uh, they do takfir on them they make them disbelievers because of a major sin which is of course incorrect as we've established and that they'll be and that they say that they will be in the hellfire forever and they say you know a despicable thing really because they've not understood the speech of allah correctly and they come with this kind of speech to Uh, bring about doubts in the minds of the people and in their religion and in their belief. But the Sheikh says, he says that but Allah Azza wa Jal basically stopped him, let's say, stopped him in his tracks and cut him off in the same sitting where he actually mentioned and tried to spread these doubts. And that, uh, that man in this majlis, in this sitting or gathering, He said, and he quotes him, he says, if, if I stand on the day of judgment, if I stand in front of Allah on the day of judgment, and I'll say to, and I'll say to Allah, Jalla wa'ala, indeed, or verily, um, the perpetrator of major sins is in the hellfire forever. And the Sheikh says, he says it like this because he wants people to become confused. And bring about doubts in the minds of the people. And he said. And then he continues and he says. If he said to me. I, if Allah said to him in reply. What what's made you say that? And then he replies. I'm saying. I'm saying. Or I'm saying what I said. Because you said in the Quran. In your book. Whoever kills a uh, whoever kills a believer intentionally, then his recompense is in the hellfire forever. The, this is what this person is saying regarding the ayah that was mentioned earlier. And the Sheikh says to us that this this story that's been mentioned now that we're reading, we're translating. He says that this was mentioned by Ibn Qutayba rahimahullah, yeah, one of the early scholars, and a group of uh, the people of knowledge scholars. And so this man, he, and, and so the Sheikh says that in this gathering where this person of misguidance was spreading these doubts amongst the people, in the same sitting, in that gathering was a young man, a young man. And he said, immediately when he heard in the sitting what this man was saying, he replied, the youth, he replied. He said, so what if Allah says to you, and I said in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ and, and then he says, so what if Allah replies to you and says that I, in my book it says, where I said, indeed, Allah, verily Allah does not forgive shirk, but he forgives other than that to whoever he wills. And that Allah then says to him, and I, and I want to forgive this person who who committed that sin and he asked that question to him and then the sheikh says and that's where he was exposed and that's where this uh, person spreading false speech and falsehood and try to make people uh, try to bring doubts in the minds of the people then this is where he was exposed and his falsehood was exposed and so the sheikh he continues says Allah di sana'u hadha shab bi tawfiq min Allah 
أعاد هذه الآية إلى محكم قال إذا إذا قال لك قلت في القرآن إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك القتل دون ذلك ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء ولهذا بعض المفسرين قالوا إن قول تعالى ومن يقتل مؤمنا متعمدا فجزاؤه جهنم خالدا فيها قالوا هذا جزاؤه إن جازاه لأن الأمر في قول يغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء قيد بالمشيئة ولهذا قالوا هذا جزاؤه إن جزاه لأن الأمر تحت المشيئة مشيئة الله سبحانه وتعالى وقد شاء الله سبحانه وتعالى كما تدل على ذلك آيات في القرآن وأحاديث في سنة النبوية أن لا يخلد في النار إلا المشرك. <coughs> so then the Sheikh explains and he says in these few lines that we've read that uh, uh, so in this gathering uh, Allah gave this young this youth success and what did this youth do? As the Sheikh mentioned the principle from earlier that he referred this ayah that the other person mentioned incorrectly uh, or took out the ruling incorrectly he referred this ayah back to the clear verses that are related to it and that is that Allah forgives every sin except shirk and so this ayah that the other person was using is to do with killing if you kill a believer and if you refer back to it then it's under the it's under the the will of Allah if Allah wills to forgive that person then he'll forgive that person the perpetrator of that major sin. If Allah wants to punish him, then he will punish him. And so this is the understanding of uh, that that particular ayah where um, where uh, where it said, and whoever kills a believer intentionally, then his recompense will be the hellfire. But that's <coughs> <coughs> only if Allah wills that. If Allah decides to forgive him, then he's forgiven, right? So this is what the Sheikh mentions here. And he also mentions uh, towards the end of this paragraph, just before the blue highlighted text. So if Allah uh, wills it, then then it's it, then this the person, the perpetrator will be punished. And if Allah wills to forgive, if Allah decides to forgive, then he's forgiven. And also the Sheikh mentions uh, with regards to the, uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam as well, that the evidence is also there. Uh, and in the blue, uh, as you can see, the blue highlighted text, then it said here, أَخْرِجُوا مِنَ النَّارِ مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ وَفِي قَلْبِهِ أَدْنَى مِثْقَالُ ذَرَّةٍ مِنْ, إف, uh, من إيمان. Uh, And the speech of the Prophet was mentioned that the way Allah will say, take out from the fire who, 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 who says or who said لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ and in his heart is is an atom's weight, let's say as an example, as the atom's weight of Iman. Yeah? Or less than that. Like uh, even the smallest amount of Iman, and they say, and they, they said, La ilaha illallah, they'll be taken out of fire. Because why? Because it's the mushrik that will be in there, or the disbeliever will be in the hellfire forever. But the believers, they won't be in the hellfire forever. If they are punished in the hellfire, it'll be to the point, depending on the sins that they committed, up until they purified, the believers are only placed in the hellfire for purification, whereas the disbelievers, whether they're a polytheist or other than that, they are in the hellfire forever. That's their dwelling place. Yeah. So then the Shaykh says, فَإِذَا وُفِقَ الْمُسْلِمُ إِلَىٰ طَرِيقَةِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ بِفَهْمِ الْمُتَشَابِهِ فِي ضَوْءِ الْمُحْكَمِ مِنْ آيَاتٍ مِنْ آيَاتِ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَلَمْ يَتَّبِعْ الْمُتَشَابِهِ أو ولم يتبع المتشابه كطريقة أهل الزير مؤرضا عن المحكم فإنه بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى يقف على على الحق والهدى ويسلم من الضلال والرد والردة. So uh, 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 والردة uh, والردة. So then the Sheikh he says that whoever follows the way of the people of knowledge in terms of understanding the unclear verses and what is the way that mentioned the sheikh, sheikh mentioned to us he said the way of that is by the by using the clear verses and and referring the unclear verses back to the clear verses to make uh, and to understand the unclear verses this way the person the sheikh says inshallah will will be will be free from falling into error and will be on the right path and upon guidance 
and it will be far away from misguidance. So then the Shaykh continues. Okay, we're nearly finished. Another five minutes or so. Inshallah, we'll be finished. And then the Shaykh continues. He says, هذه الآية هذه الآية الأولى التي أوردها الشيخ رحمه الله مصدلا بها على عدم جرم الشرك وأنه ذنب وأنه ذنب لا يغفره الله سبحانه وتعالى لصاحبه إذا لقي الله بذلك أما المشرك في الدنيا إذا تاب تاب الله عليه كما يدل لذلك آية الزمر كما مر كما مر إيداح ذلك so the Sheikh says that that if you, if as mentioned in last week's lesson, he says that if if you die upon shirk, then then you'll be in the hellfire forever because you died a non a disbeliever, you died upon shirk. But whoever seeks forgiveness from that shirk. While he's alive, as mentioned in, in the verse of Surah Al-Zumar from last week and uh, briefly mentioned earlier in this lesson and turns away from those sins and sins generally and makes that makes himself a better person, then Allah forgive forgive him his sins while he's alive. Yeah, and that a person should never despair. You know, it's never too late to be a better person, you know, to do the right thing. <coughs> While you're alive, everyone has a chance. So the Shaykh continues says, Al Ayat of Thaniya, and he says that's with regards to the first ayah with regards to um uh in regard in, in regards to uh Shirk. He says the second ayah says, Al Ayat of Thaniya Tilati or Radha Rahmallah Kaul Allah is a wajal innahuman ومن ومن المعلوم أن الجمل الكبير لا يدخل ولا يمكن أن يدخل مع ثقب الإبرة الصغير ومأن ولا يدخلون الجنة حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخيات معنى ذلك أنهم لا يدخلون الجنة أبدا لأن لأن الجمل جمل مهما حاول أن يدخل في سم الخيات أي في ثقب الإبرة الصغير لا يمكن ولا يستطيع فالمراد بذلك أنهم لا يدخلون الجنة أبد الأباد الجنة عليهم حرام ريح الجنة لا يجدون فصل فضلا عن رؤيتها أو دخولها أو التعلل بتيب هوائها وسفاء جوها حرم الله سبحانه وتعالى عليهم الجنة إنه من يشرك, من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة so then the Shaykh, he says, and the second ayah, uh, which uh, the Shaykh, the original author, brought as evidence uh, is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, and we read that in Arabic. And if we go to uh, the surah, let's see, give me one second. So one of the ayahs is Surah Al-A'raf, verse 40. And the first verse, general meaning, in that whoever commits shirk with Allah Jalla Wala, then and dies upon that, then Allah has made Jannah Haram for him, and his resting place is a hellfire. And for the polytheist, the 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 here it says Livali mean mean the polytheist there is no helper. And then the uh, uh, the um, verse uh, forty from Surah Al Araf, and if you read that. Verily, those who belie our ayat, proofs, evidences, verses, lessons, signs, revelations, etc., and treat them with arrogance, for them the gates of heaven will not be opened, and they will not enter paradise until the camel goes through the eye of the needle, which is impossible. Thus do we re recompense the mujrimun, criminals, polytheists, sinners, etc. And as, that's the tafsir of that, of course, so of the ayah. So as the Sheikh mentions the same thing here, that no way can a camel go through uh, 
uh, the needle thread of, uh, of a needle. Meaning that, because it's tiny, isn't it? You hold a needle up, but the thread that goes through the gap is tiny. You can barely see it with our eyes. <laughs> and that's showing us the, imposs- the impossibleness that whoever commits shirk with Allah, that there's no chance that person is going to heaven. It's absolutely, it's, it's, the person will never enter. It's haram for him. It's made impermissible. And this is what the Sheikh reiterates here. <coughs> And then the Shaykh continues and he says, he mentions this ayah that, uh, that we've mentioned earlier, I think. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ That whoever commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah has made uh, a heaven or, or paradise uh, forbidden for them. So, inshallah, we'll, we'll, we'll stop there. Um, and we'll continue from uh, the red highlighted text next week. And inshallah, we'll make next week's lesson um, Around eight o'clock, eight to eight, 8 p.m. Inshallah, might be more appropriate. It's again quite late now, and uh, was Maghrib is moving on as well. So eight p.m. Inshallah, and then we'll take it from there. Barakallahu fiqum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa tuubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.